with my hair cut like this, and if I smolder a bit, I guess maybe if my hair and beard were dark brown, could I pass for an American Mario Casas? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so either. Well, regardless of that, Casa stars in the new Netflix original limited series, The Innocent. It's based on a Harlan Coben novel, but is it worth the binge? An accidental killing leads a man down a dark hole of intrigue and murder. Just as he finds love and freedom, one phone call brings back the nightmare. Mario Casas is Mateo, and we learn right from the very beginning that he has got an unlucky past. There are events that cause his life to be overturned, and then he spends a good portion going forward trying to reconcile that, hide from it, and then live with it. Matt's wife Olivia gets a phone call one day that leads them all on a very mysterious journey. So like I said, this is a limited series based on a Harlan Coben novel. And there have been a few of his stories that were made into limited series for Netflix. So if you've seen any of them, you know there will be twists and turns. But also, his M.O. is to give you a large cast of characters to make the mystery twisty and winding, which then also helps to keep the audience guessing as to who did what and what the final outcome will be. I like how the first couple of episodes are told. It really helps to build out a good developed story. The transition from episode 1 to 2 is a bit jarring, but in the end, it does work effectively. Mario Casas is great in this, and because I'm sure somebody is going to ask or recommend in the comments, yes, I just watched The Invisible Guest this past week. I really enjoyed it, and I loved the suspense that the movie created. So Casas broods and pouts a lot in this, but there's also an intensity that comes out at times. And I like to see how that contrasts with the flashbacks that show him as just more of that meek and unjaded. Ara Garrido stars as Olivia, and I really liked her in this too. She's got a smaller role, even though she plays a major part of the story. She's asked to do a few wildly different things for her character, and I think she pulls them all off convincingly. Alexandra Jimenez portrays Detective Ortiz, and she's got a ton of screen time. She's abrasive at times and also standoffish, along with being blunt, but it falls right in line with the development that we've been given about her character. She's not a stranger to us because the story really does give us a ton on her backstory. And the way the entire series handles backstories is kind of cool. The characters narrate about themselves, but almost as if they're us. So, for example, one portion of the story will start out with a narration kind of like, you're Mateo Vidal, but you go by Mott. You were a law student, and you were invited to a party. And then it continues from there. And many of the main characters are introduced that way, and then we watch some action play out to illustrate what the narration is saying. And I felt that it not only helped to put pieces of the mystery together, but it came at varying times in the story, which moved along the narrative, but also heightened the drama and the suspense that was being built. So this being a mystery, part of me is always trying to see if I can figure it out before the reveal. Now, I do try to often silence that part of my brain just so that I can go along with the story and enjoy how it progresses. I got to say that just about all of it, I didn't guess until the reveal. There was one part that I did guess early on based on a visual clue, but when it was finally revealed, it was something we pretty much already knew and suspected for quite some time, so that didn't disappoint me. And the mystery aspect of this is done really well. There are many false leads and curves that are introduced to keep us guessing. But that only works if you're invested in the overall story. And I found myself deeply sucked into what was going on. The combo of characters and intrigue work together in a seriously compelling way. So this is eight episodes long, and portions of the story are very reminiscent of the Netflix series Sky Rojo. So if you've seen that series, you'll know kind of what I'm talking about when you watch this. But for this, when we reached episode five, the show really felt like it was reaching the climax. It felt like it was getting ready for the finale where all the facts are going to be revealed. But then we have three more episodes to go. The drama, intrigue, tension are all still present as the show continued on, and it somehow created even more urgency to what we were watching played out. But once we get to episodes 6 and 7, they feel a little more like a chase movie. Those episodes are still engaging, and more to the mystery is uncovered, but I think these made the series feel and go on longer than it needed to. Now, each of the episodes are right around an hour long, but episodes 5 and 8 are both over an hour. So this does make the show a time commitment if you're going to binge. And truly, I think it will be hard not to binge just because of the story and how compelling it is. 
I do think in addition to those couple of episodes that made the story longer, there are some repetitious scenes that work to a varying degree. Sometimes a brief repeat of a scene to really highlight and emphasize what is being discussed at that moment can be good, but to have several minute long sequences play over and over just begins to be a little annoying and monotonous. There's also a portion of the story that deals with some higher up investigations unit, and I don't think the motivations for the leader of that group are well developed. She says she's trying to protect some secrets, but that's a little bit of a weak plot point. And based on the story parts surrounding this, I think what they had already was compelling enough and it didn't really need to play her part up so much. Now there are some really tough portions to watch because of the story context surrounding several of the characters. It's brutal, disgusting, and even abhorrent. I mean, I was actually a little surprised by how dark the story went at times and what they were willing to show. Several parts are probably going to make you want to look away or maybe even turn it off. The context fits with the overall narrative, but it might be a little too over the top and what they actually show on screen. So overall, the mystery that is built in this is highly engaging. The chemistry and charisma of the characters is compelling and convincing. <laughs> I just used a ton of words to begin with C there, didn't I? Uh, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Uh, all right, I, I digress. Anyway, so much of this show works to create some very riveting storytelling. I understand that some of the content is just going to be too much. I mean, it's, it is just a lot. But if you do continue to watch, you're rewarded with a pretty satisfying mystery and I think more than a few surprises along the way. There is a lot of sex, nudity, and profanity, and then a ton of absolutely brutal violence, including sexual violence. I give The Innocent four out of five couches. I'd love to know what you thought of the series in the comments below. Are you a fan of Harlan Coben? Do you have a favorite mystery of his? Let me know. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me. Or maybe I'm Mario Casas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>